As always, Xavier continues to push the boundaries of education, now towards hybrid learning. We are working towards our apostolic mission that includes upholding the welfare of the youth and their holistic development. We would now like to call on our high school principal, Mrs. Maria Teresa Nebres Ladrido, for her message and to give more details about Excel 2.0, Savior School's e-learning program for this school year. Good afternoon, dear parents, and welcome to another school year of Excel. I'd like to give a special welcome to the grade 12 parents whose sons will be spending their last year in Savior School. Last school year was unprecedented. The pandemic has presented many unforeseen and complex challenges to the world, especially in the field of education. Difficult as it was, Savior School embraced and responded to the challenges through our online distance learning program called Excel. This also gave us several opportunities to engage in new ways of teaching and learning and revisit we, we would practice our academic programs and formation programs and refine them. As we transitioned to online learning last year and also still this school year, the following essential ideas, ideas proved to be truer than ever. First, our students' context is essential in designing the curriculum and the learning experiences. Second, the curriculum and practices should constantly be revised and refined to address the needs of the learners and the, the demands of the time. Third, students need to be provided with a structured and predictable learning environment, but they also need opportunities for independent learning. And finally, communication and collaboration with parents are important ingredients to the positive growth of a child. And these are the same guiding principles that we will continue to strengthen this second year of Excel. We will continue to strengthen the core concepts and skills needed in the subject areas. We will strengthen communication and collaboration, care, connection, and context. While we generally did well last school year, we know that there is still much room for improvement. And hence, we made some necessary adjustments to some of our programs to address the needs of both our learners and teachers. The changes we made for this year are based on the results of a student survey of 1,410 respondents from grade seven to 12, feedback from the student council executive board, feedback from the teacher and the parents, as well as our own personal experiences from last school year. The general feedback based on the data we called shows favorable results on the following areas. Schedule and structure, haircut and uniform policies or um, the lack of haircut and uniform policies, simplified grading system and awards, relentless effort of the teachers to reach out and extend compassion, and ECA offerings. On the other hand, the areas for improvement include Schoology format, the mobile device management system, the heavy workload of the students, and the wellness and social activities and interaction of our teenagers. This afternoon, allow me to, me and my assistant principals to share with you some of the changes, as well as inform you of what to expect this school year. Given that the student's learning environment is still virtual and online, our curricular programs will remain focused on the essential skills and core competencies, the foundational skills in the subject areas. Our faculty and staff are on a constant process of reviewing, auditing, designing, reviewing, auditing, and redesigning the curriculum to ensure that it remains first relevant to the student's needs and the needs of the times. Second, that it covers prerequisite skills needed to move forward and to another year level. Next is that it's useful beyond the subject and beyond school. Fourth, especially for the grade 11 and 12 students, 
who prepare them for college and other external standardized exams. And fifth, it will be aligned to our school's vision, mission, and goals. In addition to the following Excel features that I have mentioned, this school year, we will still have the following features. I'm sure many of you have already seen this via the primer that we sent last week. First, for the school year, we will still have learning blocks that will be composed of 100 or 50 minutes per period. Next is the frequency of the subjects and sessions will vary depending, of course, on the student's trend okay, or on their choice of subjects. In the junior high school, for instance, there is more emphasis in math, science, English, and Chinese. Third, the learning blocks will consist of a combination of synchronous or live sessions and asynchronous activities. Fourth, students will generally spend an average of two to three hours of synchronous sessions a day to manage screen and Zoom fatigue. Also for this year, we will still have the presence of teacher companions or teacher assistants who will serve to be um, assistants in the classes of our subject teachers. Next, we will also still have daily and regular check-ins, which will allow students and teachers to establish a stronger connection. And this is very much needed in a remote learning setting. Seventh, or next is the presence of wellness and movement and creativity and expression. So even if it's already online distance learning, we feel that the students will need recreational subjects so that they will have avenues for them to enhance um, their creativity. So we want them to be creative. We want them to, to think of um, other projects and as well as we want them to move and be physically fit. Also for the school year, we will retain the committees and clubs. We will offer them to all the students, okay? So that they will have opportunities to pursue their interests, their initiatives, and also their advocacies. And finally, of course, in Savior School, non-negotiable would be the formation programs, such as mentoring, self-management sessions, recollections, and service interactions. However, as mentioned earlier, we made certain adjustments in response to the feedback of the learners and the other stakeholders. Revisions were made in the schedule of the students to dispose them of properly for the formation activities to provide them with more academic support as well as nurture their student agency or their self-agency and self-management skills. So please look at the screen. Um, this is also presented in the primer. And we have made a revision um, in the schedule of the school dance, especially on the Friday schedule. Um, also take a look at the IB Diploma Program sample schedule. Um, of course, the IB Diploma Program will have a more rigorous academic program and therefore their schedule is more um, loaded compared to the other senior high school standard program students. So for this school year, the changes we made are as follows. Classes will begin at 8.30. Given the physiological needs of our teenage students, your teenage boys, we will start classes a few minutes later than um, last year. And we believe that this will allow your sons to have ample time for sleep, as we know, and we believe that they sleep late doing their homework or working on their projects and not chatting um, with their girlfriends and friends via Discord. During our time, I think that's the version, our version of Telebabad. So we want them to be productive in the evenings and at the same time, be um, awake enough to come to school the next day. Second, we have extended the lunch break by 10 minutes and therefore for the school year, we will have a one our lunch break so to give the boys enough time also to rest and for the parents who are staying at home to prepare lunch for their sons. Monday and Thursday classes will end at 3 p.m. Again um, it will vary for the IB diploma program students and advisory periods compared to the one in the past or last year we've moved them in the afternoon or to the afternoon to check out on the students and allow the teachers to close the day with 
their advices. And as I've mentioned, we have purposely made Friday's schedule lighter. I'd like you to look at the screen again so that you will see how the Friday will look like for both junior high school students and standard program students and for some IB students as well. In consideration of the monotony and fatigue that online learning brings, Friday has been deliberately designed to be a lighter day. As mentioned, this is also to allow them to focus on our various formation activities, which we hold very important and valuable in Savior School. The first two periods are meant for student support through conferences, independent learning time, um, bonding with classmates, and such. During this time, the principal's team, teachers, and guidance counselors will utilize these periods to confer with students who are having difficulties in school, especially those who are under academic, an academic status, while the rest of the students may study on their own, catch up, do group work, on, or consult with their teachers. On this day, mentoring is also held so that as the week ends, the mentors and advisors can help process their mentees and close the week with them. Of course, as mentioned, we value the students' creativity and their interest and their leisurely pursuits. And therefore, we have also scheduled clubs to be on a Friday. Um, occasionally, because we will have recollections and retreats, they will also, have, um, they will also be held on a Friday. Similar to that will also be the masses and the service interactions. We hope that we, this add, these added features to the schedule will help revitalize the energy of your sons after a regular school week and allow them to catch up or just allow them to take a break and breathe. While majority of the students found the simplified grading system last year favorable, some changes were made to make the grades more discriminating and more reflective of the student's performance. After all, grades are not the end, but they also serve as feedback and should not push the students to be overly competitive at the expense of their psychological well-being. This year, for the standard program students, the grading system has been revised from three-level grading system to a four-level grading system. In the past, we had the insufficient evidence, um, pass, and with distinction. This time, we added PR or proficient. And this is true for the main academic subjects, homeroom, conduct, and effort marks, among others. This will be explained further by the assistant principal for academics later. Despite the pandemic and all the more so because of the pandemic, the school will continue with the practice of using letter grades as we have for the past 10 years, albeit simplified for the school year. This provides students with much flexibility and leeway, especially given the online setup, which is still generally new to them and to everyone. While not ideal or perfect, we believe that the grading system we employ is one that is equitable and fair to everyone, not just for those who are struggling, nor for those who are excelling. As regard tech tools, while we gave much flexibility last year on the mobile device management system or eSchool pad, making it optional, this year we have made it a requirement. The MDM primarily serves to aid teachers and most especially the parents in ensuring that their sons are less distracted and can focus on schoolwork during class hours. It is a classroom management tool for online learning where students study from home um, and where parents will be aided, especially those who are unable to supervise their sons all the time. Please note that um, the, the MDM will be operational during school hours and will be taken, taken, taken out during lunch breaks and dismissal. Please note also that we are working with the Student Council Executive Board on what apps are useful and what apps may be blocked during school hours. 
The Schoology format has also been streamlined to help students in accessing their modules more easily and efficiently as they go about online learning. Similarly, Zoom protocols have been refined to ensure security and maximization of learning. For this school year, we would also like to continue to strengthen homeschool collaboration as this is one of the most crucial factors in the success of a student. For ease and clarity in communication, we would like to remind the parents of the following. First, communication will primarily be done via the parents' personal or declared email and no longer via Schoology email. And with that, may we please request you to provide us with an email that works. In addition to that, we request you to check your emails regularly for announcement from the school or um, for feedback from the teacher regarding your response progress or lack thereof. And finally, we would like to request all parents to go through the proper channels and to observe proper protocols. Let's continue to be respectful with one another, be charitable with our words, and be prudent with what we say, whether it's in person, via email, or social media. Our students, your sons take their cue from us adults. And it is important to remember that we are all still learning. So with that, some things may not be as perfect or as coordinated as they were in the past. So please, dear parents, trust the process and extend grace because we are all still learning how to learn and teach from a distance. Finally, let me just share a few tips or maybe pieces of advice and also requests for you, dear parents, to help your sons, our sons thrive better in the Excel setup. Please first help your sons establish routines and provide them with a space at home. If that doesn't have to be big, for as long as it's conducive to learning. Also, please stick to a schedule. Establish a daily routine with them to emphasize that schoolwork remains a priority. Set clear expectations for when schoolwork is to be completed and when preferred activities will become available. Second, please, if possible, begin and end the day by checking in on your sons. Not all students thrive in distance learning. Some struggle with too much independence or la lack of structure. And these check-in routines can help students, your sons, avoid challenges and disappointments later. They help students develop self-management and executive functioning skills that are not only essential for college or for school, but are also essential for life. This is especially true because the main problem of the students last year and even pre in the previous years is non-submission of requirements. Therefore, we believe that parents can help us address this concern. So in the morning, you might want to ask your sons, what classes or subjects do you have today? Do you have an assessment? How will you spend your time? What resources do you need? What can I do to help? And towards the latter part of the day, you, may, you might want to ask them, how far did you go in terms of your learning tasks? What did you discover? What was hard? What could we do to make tomorrow better? Did you learn something new? Next is, if we can, let us try to recalibrate our expectations. It is important to be realistic about how much your child can accomplish while learning remotely. Please do not pressure them too much. Just healthy pressure, especially when it comes to college or college admissions and applications. Grades are important, but they are not everything. The whole pandemic is an excellent teacher and an excellent learning experience, not only for us adults, but more so for the teenagers, our students. Remember that your sons are going through this crisis as well. They are learning to exist in a world that is just as new to them as it is new to you and to me. 
So the pandemic really is a test of resilience, grit, and just the mere fact that your sons are showing up each day, going to school each day, opening their, opening their screens, being present is already a sign of grit and resilience. So in as much as we want them to learn about different concepts in the different subject areas, let us also put premium in their formation and character development. Let's put premium in what they've learned and what they're learning as a result of the pandemic, their perspectives about life, their, the life skills they have learned, real life lessons, realizations about the world and people. And finally, especially for our teenage sons, let us try to take their concerns seriously. Remember that what may seem trivial to us, parents could mean the whole world to our sons. They may be anxious, and I'm sure of this, okay? Um, they're anxious about maintaining friendships or worrying about their future. So let's not try to downplay the importance of their feelings and their concerns, and let's try our best to make them feel better and be present to them. So let's try your best to take time to hear them out and listen to them. To end, I'd just like to say that we will continue to remain adaptive and flexible. We are not sure how long distance or online distance learning will continue, but we know that it won't last forever. As we say, walang forever, and online distance learning is one of them. Our students will take their cue from adult behavior and attitudes, so it is important for all of us, both parents and teachers, to support them and to communicate calm, confidence, and optimism that we will pull through the crisis together. This will help your sons, our students, stay focused on learning and help them grow well despite all the hurdles and challenges. So once again, let us remember, our focus for this year is to strengthen core skills, communication, collaboration, context, care, and connection. Before I go, I'd just like to remind everyone that there will be a meet and greet with the class advisors and mentors on June 10, um, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. And we will also have the first day of classes for your sons on June 14, which will begin at 8.30 a.m. Once again, thank you very much for your support, and we wish you a meaningful school year ahead. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ladrido. Savior truly aims to develop well-rounded individuals to become men fully alive, endowed with a passion for justice and the skills for development. Thus, the school gives equal importance to both academics and formation, responding to the needs of the times, always remembering core skills, communication, collaboration, context, care, and connection. Formation is an important part of Jesuit education, and we will continue to give a high premium on the student's formation on our second year of online distance learning. The High School Assistant Principal for Formation, Mrs. Andrea Chavelli de la Serna, will now present to you the formation initiatives and programs of Excel 2.0. Hey, dear parents, our partners in formation. Before I begin, allow me to introduce myself. I am Andrea Chavelli Vendosa de la Serna, your high school assistant principal for formation. I would also like to introduce to you the high school formation offices. First, the high school guidance department, headed by Mr. Christian Domingo. So just for your information, Aside from the grade level counselors, please take note that we also have a designated career counselor for our senior high school students' needs. Just know that our counselors are always available for your sons and even for you, dear parents, during the school year. We hope that both you and your sons would not hesitate to approach them anytime. Second would be the High School Office of Disciplinary Services 
are more commonly known as the ODS. This office is headed by the Prefect of Discipline, Mrs. Iris Sandhil. Aside from the grade level student supervisor, we just want to inform you that we also have a dedicated student supervisor for the IB students in the senior high. This office is in charge of monitoring and checking the attendance of your son, attending to other student welfare concerns, and of course, processing of disciplinary cases, even during the online setup. When you get a call from the ODS, please know that they are most likely checking on your son, especially if there are frequent absences or tardiness. The call is really meant to know your son's context and to offer help so that we can better assist you during this time. The third office is the Student Activity Program Office headed by Mr. John Pierre-Renipa. This office is in charge of implementing all the extracurricular activities of the high school, including the student government. Their office promotes student leadership, student empowerment, uh, and is in charge of all the student-initiated activities in the high school. Last but definitely not the least would be the Campus Ministry and Service Office, headed by our Campus Minister, Father Arnulfo Buktas of the Society of Jesus, and assisted by the Campus Ministry and Service Coordinator, Ms. Mary Silvertusho. This office is in charge of preparing and implementing all your son's service and spiritual activities of the school. They make sure that the spiritual formation is given priority even during this time. Now that you've met the high school team, high school formation team, let me just begin very briefly with the results of our students' evaluation, focus group discussion, and dialogue that we fielded last school year. To ask your sons how they were and how else our formation programs could improve. Based on the dialogue and the evaluation, here are some of the highlights that came out. So as you can see on the screen, most of the students mentioned being happy and satisfied with the formation offerings last school year, despite it being online. Actually, according to them, there were more than enough formation activities. Uh, what they express the need for uh, would be more unstructured activities and casual conversation. So they felt there were enough structured activities, but one, what they wanted were more personal class bondings, for example. And they felt that the, the time for self-management sessions during Monday and advisory period was um, not enough. So they hoped that it was a bit longer um, and there was more time for it. They also asked us to review our Saturday required activities. So last school year, um, we had some Saturday required activities like the service interaction, and they were asking that it be reviewed and wished that there were more, um, if possible, and if their parents, the government, the school will allow to have face-to-face -face school activities in the future. Of course, um, as expected, they were very much satisfied with the lenient haircut and no uniform policy. A number of our students also mentioned that they appreciated the close follow-up of their class advisors, their ODS supervisors when they'd be absent or tardy. Of course, our students also liked that their classes started later than 7.30. Actually, a lot of our students mentioned that they didn't mind ending a little bit later as long as they didn't have to wake up early. There was also a resounding request to be able to join more clubs and committees. Last school year, we only allowed them to join one club. And of course, there was also a resounding request from the grade 10 to grade 12 students to have um, the online interaction with other schools. Um, if, you, if you'd know, um, during the face-to-face -face classes, they would have interaction with um, ICA, Assumption, and other girls' schools. And our students were asking if they could have this even during the online setup. So those were some of the things that came out during the evaluation. Now, hearing all of these, I now want to share with you the direction 
of the formation offices this school year. So what is our response after listening, after hearing what they wanted? So we realized that we already have enough activities. So it's really not about having a lot of it, but really deepening our offerings and their experiences. So it's really to strengthen what we already have, maybe reinvent, restructure our activities so that it fits their needs even more. Um, of course, um, I'm not sure if you've seen our primer that we've sent out. Um, we adjusted our schedule to meet their needs and to highlight the importance of the formation offices. For example, instead of our usual check-ins last school year that would happen at 8.15, we will have now our check-outs, which is a way for the class advisors really to check on the students at the end of the day and to give reminders and so on. Um, we also tried to We'll try to make sure that we will not require Saturday service activities. So we will try to use the weekday, whatever is in their schedule, to have the formation activities. We will definitely, because of um, I think the students are very happy with it, we are definitely keeping the lenient haircut and no uniform policy. So yay, I can hear the students being happy. Okay, so, um, but, um, also, our promise would be really to strengthen our unstructured class and batch activities and to even strengthen mentoring even more. Because the students mentioned really looking forward to mentoring as a way to just have conversation with their classmates and their teachers. So this is really something that we want to focus on this school year. Okay, with so many requests, we will also now allow our students to join more clubs, to allow them to explore more their interests and skills. A lot of our students mentioned that clubs at the end of the day was really a venue for them to unwind and relax. So we heard them, so we will allow them to join more clubs this school year. We will also definitely strengthen our guidance check-in, guidance check-in wherein the students uh, will be called um, for more frequent routine interview and student conferences. And of course, a new addition last school year was our tie up with Mind Nation. And we're happy to let you know that we are continuing our tie up with them because we believe that the student's wellness is our priority. So just for those who are not very familiar yet, Mind Nation is open to our students and they offer 24 seven social conversations with wellness coaches and if needed, they have available um, specialists as well. So um, last but not the least, um, for this school year, what our formation programs and offices would really want to focus on would not just be wellness, um, responsibility of our students and spirituality, but this year, most especially, we really want to strengthen youth empowerment and engagement. So um, this gives you an overview of how we want to proceed this school year. Um, now I'm here to present to you just some formation structures. Um, I hope that by mentioning these to you, you'll all be familiar with the terms when you see them on your son's schedule. So you won't be surprised when you receive a letter from us saying there's a special advisory or you see um, self-management in their Monday schedule. So I'll just go through the terms one by one so you dear parents are also in the loop. Okay, so first and foremost is what we call the wellness check-ins. Okay, um, the wellness check-ins are done either by the, it could be done by anyone, the class advisor, the mentor, the subject teacher, um, the guidance counselor, or maybe the ODS supervisor. And this um, check-ins would happen most of the time during um, consultation periods in the afternoon. So what happens here is they just really check on your son know, to know what's happening with them and ask if there are any concerns. This is also when the ODS supervisors can talk to your son or your guidance um, counselors can do routine interviews, okay? Second would be what we call the guidance period or the self-management periods, which last year took place in the morning, but this school year is gonna be moved to Monday afternoon. Uh, just like last school year, the third one would be what we call the virtual guidance rooms. So what are these guidance rooms? They're really like Zoom rooms that will be open for students to drop by during breaks. This will give them a chance not just to meet their counselors casually, but maybe to have casual conversations with their batchmates as well. So we are continuing with the virtual guidance rooms. 
we will still have our once a month high school general assembly. So just take note that on days with a general assembly, there will be no guidance period. And then on the schedule is what we, the, we also have what we call advisory. Advisory is the 15 minute period the advisors have at the end of the day to check attendance, ask the class how they are, give announcements and reminders. And of course, if a student would want to talk to ad the advisor after advisory period, um, it may spill over to the consultation period. This is really the reason why we also moved it to the afternoon so that students with concerns, maybe um, students with questions who want to see their advisor one on one would be able to do so um, smoothly by um, moving um, smoothly to the consultation period. And then there would be times that maybe um, you would hear uh, get a letter from us maybe, or get an announcement from us that there's a special advisory. So special advisory does not happen all the time. Um, they can happen once a month, twice a month. Um, and it's when we say special advisory, that would really just mean that we may have an institution or uh, institutional or a unit mass and other activities that students are required to attend. Example, high school programs, um, maybe uh, the pep rally, for example. So these are called special advisory sessions. Of course, aside from the special advisory, we will still keep our mentoring period, which will take place at the end of each week on a Friday. And um, we also have examine. In the past, examine would happen uh, once a week just before mentoring. But for this school year, we will be having examine at the start of the week and, and at the end of the week. So um, at the start of the week, it will happen right after self-management session. And as mentioned, because um, we know that student follow-up is very important, especially during the online setup, we will still have our usual consultation periods. So um, last but not the least, um, just expect that your sons will still have their usual service and recollection activities, which are required because we believe in your son's holistic development. So um, aside from all those terms that I mentioned that you probably see in the schedule and hopefully you've also read in our primer. I'm also now flashing for your information, the clubs and committees that we will open for your sons this school year. So um, you can just glance through it. Um, I'll give you a little time um, to look through it um, so that um, when school starts, uh, maybe your sons can already try to think of what clubs or committees they'd want to join this school year. So don't worry, we will have what we call our ECA fair, which is our extracurricular activity fair, wherein the club moderators will be showcasing their clubs and what they usually do. Um, so your sons will be able to drop by different Zoom rooms and to choose the club before enrollment. So as you can see, even in the online setup, we have a wide variety of club and committees um, that your sons can choose from. So aside from the clubs, we also have the voluntary um, committees that your sons may want to join, especially if it's something they are passionate about. Um, and of course, we still have our usual officers, um, officers club and the student government. Now, let me just proceed very briefly. Uh, I'm sure you're wondering what your son's section will be this school year and who will be his classmates. As you may have seen in our primer, which I'm just going to um, discuss very briefly, um, uh, the grade 7 and the grade 11 students are the only students we resection this year because the grade 7, they're technically new to the high school, so they were resectioned by their um, teachers in grade six. The grade 11 students have been resectioned because they have to be grouped according to their strands. But the rest of the student body were kept in the same classes to provide familiarity among them and to strengthen their bonds, especially during the online setup. However, there might be some students who were resectioned, um, but these uh, students were really either um, resection because they have been transferred to advanced classes, um, they have certain requests that are valid, or there were issues that arose from the previous school year. But majority of our student body would be in the same section. Um, the sections we will be releasing on June 9, 
just before the meet and greet of the parents with the class advisors and mentors. So I'm almost about to end, but before I do so, um, dear parents, this is where I'll really just need your help. I just want to highlight some expectations we will have from our students that we hope you could also reinforce at home and help us remind your sons about. So first is really to attend classes on time and regularly. So attendance was somehow a concern last school year. Um, I'm really hoping it was not because they were demotivated or they did not want to attend classes. Most of the time it was really because of poor internet connection. And at times we'd have to call the parents when this became too frequent. So we're really asking the parents to help us monitor that their sons attend class on time, especially because we begin later in the day, usually about 8.15 or 8.30. So um, just want to highlight that for this school year, advisory and mentoring periods are required, meaning attendance will be checked. So they may be considered half day, for missing advisory and mentoring period. We also hope that um, your sons will commit to attending and participation, participating in all formation activities, meaning the service interaction, the recollection, if we have special advisories, um, some talks and seminars, because we believe really that aside from academics, the formation activities and programs are really there because we believe in their holistic development. Um, we also hope that you can encourage your sons to be diligent, to inform us if they have concerns, they have problems, if they're not feeling well during the day, if they have internet problems, you know, to send us an email to let us know that they have concerns so we can also assist them with whatever they'll, they'll miss. So part of that is also being honest, uh, letting us know when there are things or policies that are not clear with them. What we also hope to see in our high school students is initiative, meaning the teachers are just there. They're just one message away in Schoology, one email message. So reach out to their advisor, mentor, their guidance counselor, their student supervisor, if they need any help and assistance, because we are here. All of us are here to help them. Um, of course, um, we also want to see in them self-discipline following rules and procedures, especially when attending class, um, Zoom protocols like using appropriate pictures and using their appropriate names during classes, raising their hand, using the chat box function. So, um, and of course, being responsible by submitting their re reply slips and other requirements. Um, hopefully, we also see that your sons avoid cramming and would be able to manage their time and their assessments well. Um, and um, I just want to stress this um, a bit that last school year, there were a lot of concerns in terms of academic um, integrity, meaning a lot of times students would forget to cite their sources or their references before submitting their work. And because we're also not with them face to face when we have assessments, we don't really know if they're holding other gadgets. So we hope that you would also reinforce integrity at home by reminding them that, you know, assessments are there really to help them to test them to see what they have learned and we hope that you know they wouldn't use this cord or copy from a classmate's work um, and all those things but of course last but not the least what we also want to see in our students is really balance that they're able to balance work and wellness it is the reason why we restructured our schedule it's because we also believe that um, our students need some sort of time out time to rest so it really will depend on how they will budget their time and we hope that with our self-management sessions um, they would also learn how to balance work with um, wellness now in terms of our partnership with you dear parents we also hope for the following um, we hope for closer coordination uh, collaboration and communication. Um, we will be emailing you, messaging you in Schoology, emailing you via the email that you will give us on the info sheet. But please also do know that you can email us or the teachers anytime that you or your sons would need help. Um, I think this um, collaboration communication is very, very important, especially now that the setup um, is online. 
So, um, as mentioned, expect emails from the ODS supervisor if there are attendance concerns. Expect some emails from the class advisor or the subject teachers if there are missubmissions. So, um, on your end, if your son is not feeling well or has internet connection problems, please reach out to us. Um, we will definitely reply to you right away. Also, I've already mentioned this, reinforce, remind your sons about academic integrity. Um, the third one is really a request. Uh, we cannot monitor all the gadgets your sons will have at home, but if he has a phone, a laptop, and an iPad with him during class, um, therefore, he will have a lot of um, distractions. Uh, so it would really be helpful if you your parents could help us or whoever's at home with your son be able to limit really the gadgets that he will have with him during class hours so that he can also focus on what's supposed to be done. Um, my last two requests is just to attend the meet and greet with the class advisors and mentors on June 10th. And as mentioned, reach out to us if you have any concerns so we can work together. So to end, um, dear parents, especially our parents last school year, thank you for your support. It was a difficult year, but we pulled through. Thank you for your patience. We know that things weren't always perfect, but uh, do know that we really tried our best. Thank you also for your dedication for helping us in the education, the formation of your sons. But most of all, thank you for your feedback. Without your feedback, we wouldn't be able to do even better um, this school year. So just to end, um, I just hope that we can keep in mind that the children, the students, our saviorians are the priority, are the real priority. And change is the reality. Um, the pandemic, nobody wanted this. The online setup is our way of really coping with this pandemic. The change is really there. But this will only work if we will really collaborate and work together. And of course, um, no school can work well for children if parents and teachers do not act in partnership on behalf of the children's best interests. So I just want to end that um, letting you all know that everything we do, all our formation practices is really for your sons because we care and love them just as, as if they are our own sons. So um, uh, we are partners in this, we are a team. And we can only do so much um, alone. But if we're together, I know that this will be a successful school year. So thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you very much, Mrs. De La Serna. Formation is truly the heart of Jesuit education. And we are indeed partners in forming the hearts and minds of your children, our students. In order to facilitate online distance learning, the students and teachers will still be using Schoology as the learning management system, together with eSchoolPad, our mobile device management system this school year. To talk more about Schoology and eSchoolPad, we have Mr. Christian Bumatayo, the High School Technology Integration Coordinator. Good afternoon, dear high, senior high school parents, students, and teachers, and welcome to our second year of Excel. I'm Krishna Bumatayo, the Technology Integration Coordinator of Xavier High School, and I'm here to give you updates on the developments for one-to-one -one practices for this school year. But first, to give us a glimpse of what happened during Excel last year, we have this very short clip. There's so much more to a savior education. Even with the challenges brought on by the pandemic, our school still held fast to its mission of molding men with and for others. At Savior, we value life experiences as much as we value education. So, not only do we go to school to learn, but also to forge lasting relationships with the people we meet. In this extraordinary setup, we were taught to rethink the ways of society 
while contributing solutions to some of its pressing problems. That's why we learned to challenge the status quo by reimagining what online education really is. We excel in our academic studies while having fun experiences with our peers. We explore various activities and pursue our interests as we aim to bring out the best in all of us. We exhibit dedication and commitment in all that we do as we continue to build memories that are worth keeping. People say that high school is one of the best experiences of a person's life. At Savior, we make that fully alive. Walk without fear along life's dark and stony road. Give a helping hand to light in someone's load. Make your light brightly shine till the journey's end. Look she up, look she up, look she up, look. Last school year, to have learning, instruction, and communication consolidated in one place, we opted to use Schoology as a learning management system. Classes, clubs, and formation activities made use of Schoology to help manage instruction, interaction, and coordination with students. However, much like any new system tried for the first time, Schoology use was not free from challenges. And we thank the teachers, students, and even new parents for your patience and understanding in allowing us to fix the issues that we have encountered. I'm happy to report that come the end of the first term last year, reports on system concerns have been minimized. And according to last year's Student Council Executive Board, the student body has adjusted to using the learning management system in general. It was also during this meeting with the 2020-2021 Student Council that we consulted them on how we can further improve Schoology for easier use of students. The SC provided a proposal, and upon consultation with the faculty, we plan, we plan to apply this proposal this year for a more comprehensive, uniform, and easy to follow Schoology platform. Another system all our students will be using, using this school year is the eSchool Pad, our mobile device management system, or MDM. This was introduced last year, but use was made optional. This year, however, we wish to have everyone use a system. And to give us a glimpse or a refresher of what the eSchool pad can do, here's another short clip. This is teacher Kate. She loves utilizing devices for teaching, as it enhances student learning. One day, she caught one of her students playing games in class. Teacher Kate started having second thoughts. She wonders if there's a way for her to continue using devices for learning, without students being distracted. Introducing eSchoolPad, or ESP. ESP with its cutting-edge technology, makes learning easier and better in school. Now even at home. ESP is the best mobile device management tool for teachers like Teacher Kate, and for parents as well. ESP makes it easy for teachers to get the attention and focus of students, both in school and at home. With these powerful features at their hands. Hide app and scheduler function. Block screen function. App lock function. With ESP, Teacher Kate can use the schedule feature to hide unnecessary apps during class hours, thus eliminating distractions. She can also use black screen to disable the device to get her students full attention. The app lock feature helps her and her students to be on the same app at the same time. This feature also helps prevent cheating and students from going to other apps not allowed by the teacher. Now both teachers and parents are confident that students will not be distracted in the classroom and can use devices for efficient learning. Enhanced learning is easy with the cutting edge technology of ESP. Many concerns have been raised about MDM last year. And these concerns may have stemmed from not completely understanding what the system does. To quote from the Q&A of the letter sent to the parents, allow me to identify what the MDM can and cannot do. The MDM software can restrict access of the gadget to identified applications and websites. 
However, MDM will not give the school access to the visited sites, files, including photos, and applications of, applications of the student's iPad. Hence, you can be assured that the MDM will be utilized to serve its purpose of helping students focus on schoolwork during class hours. The decision to use eSchoolPad comes from the concern raised by parents about making sure that students are on task during school hours. This system helps us in doing that. We have consulted the student council in improving the list of applications and sites to be restricted. We hope that this will result in a balance and maximize use of the eSchool pad. In general, it is our hope that through the use of these learning management systems, we all will just not survive the school year, but just but actually thrive in it. Thank you, dear parents, students, and teachers for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Christian Bumatayo. This new normal requires much openness as we adapt together, especially with maximizing the use of these applications, which will help facilitate your son's online learning. Before we go into our respective breakout rooms for the standard track and IBDP students and parents, we will now hear from our school president, Father Aristotle D. of the Society of Jesus. Good afternoon, dear parents. You already heard me in the first presentation, but, but I'm sure you noticed that it was a pre-recorded video because I'm the only administrator who has to be present at all the parents' orientations this week and adapting to our new situation, uh, it seemed much better to uh, do a pre-recorded video. But I did want to greet all of you live right now um, and reiterate the point that your, your sons, being in senior high school, our, our oldest students probably feel the constraints of the pandemic most uh, in the entire school community because they are at that age when so much of their life, life is about being with their friends and experiencing special school activities in the last two years of high school. So we all feel the constraints, especially for them, we feel for them. And I look forward to working with you very closely so that we can plan out some activities uh, that will help them uh, cope. As soon as uh, public health protocols allow it, we will design some activities for them, hopefully within the school year. Over the weekend, the good news came that the Sinovac vaccine can be used not just for 15 years old and up, like Pfizer and Moderna, but even for children. So I think it's really a matter of time before Minors will all be vaccinated and we will be able to resume face-to-face -face activities with more confidence, with more peace. But even without that, uh, if the public uh, status, you know, if we shift to MGCQ at some point, I do hope that we can plan some activities for your sons during these special years of senior high school. So you've heard a lot of information uh, this afternoon and there'll be more when you break out into your groups but I hope we can work very closely together uh, to provide meaningful education and formation for your sons this school year. Welcome, take care, and God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, much. Thank you very much Father Ari, for your remarks this afternoon. At this point, we will now move to breakout rooms for the standard track and the IBDP parents. You will automatically be sent to your respective rooms based on your Zoom name, either with SHS before or IB. For those who have not yet renamed, kindly add SHS for Standard Track Parents, Students, and Teachers, or IB for the IB parents, IBDP Parents, Students, and Teachers. You may do this through the Participants tab or by sending a message to rename support. We will have Mrs. Bermejo for the Senior High Standard Track and Mr. Bulosan for the IB Parents. We shall now open the breakout rooms. You will be automatically led to your respective breakout room, except for those who have not yet renamed as you will need to manually move you to your breakout room.